So I want to preach to you today from this subject, male and female. And I want to add as a thought, there I said it. Father, bless us now to do warfare in Jesus' name, to preach your word in Jesus' name, amen. The point I was making when I was pointing out to you what uh, Patricia saw me do was God knew two and a half weeks ago that uh, this message would be absolutely necessary today. I'm going to ask the text to air a portion of the clip that is being circulated, showed on various news outlets. I want to say to you that the media, the media in many ways are such liars. Um, um, uh, they're just liars. They, they, they're, they're just not fair. Um, journalism in America is dead. There was a time, um, and maybe they don't teach it anymore, but from my understanding, journalism 101 is that you're not supposed to know the private opinions of the journalists. That if a reporter reports a story, that the reporter is only supposed to report the story. The reporter is not supposed to tell you what they think, nor tell you what to think about the story. They're just supposed to report the story. Pure journalism is not saying, so-and-so made a homophobic slur, or so-and-so said uh, something that is racist. Pure reporting is so-and-so said this or they said that and let you determine whether it was homophobic, transphobic, misogynistic, racist, or whatever. Now these people treat you, the listening public and the reading public, as though you're stupid and you don't have a brain, as though you cannot think for yourself, so they, they, they not only report a story, but they also set out to tell you what to think. And, uh, and that's wrong. They are pretending, and these are such hypocrites, they are pretending that something has surfaced concerning the lieutenant governor when he was here uh, back in August for the convocation that we extended an invitation to him uh, how many months in advance? At least two months. We advertised for at least a month that he was coming. People came from everywhere. We couldn't hardly social distance that night. And uh, the overwhelming majority of people who was here cheering the lieutenant governor on were black folk. So that doesn't fit the narrative. And so they're saying that something has surfaced as though they went and they looked and they searched and they found it. When the truth is, when he was here that night, we streamed it. Just as we're streaming now, we posted it. It's out there. So spare me the drama. See, that's designed, Paula, to make you think that we were trying to do something clandestine. Maybe the church as a matter of fact, the reporter said to me, said, when he was at your church, this has gotten out. And literally said to me, I'm sure you didn't uh, want this to be out or know that it was going to get out like this. 
I said, uh, no, uh, uh, we posted it. I said, yes, I did. I was hoping as many people uh, could see, would see it as possible. And the question to me was, I know, literally, I know that sometimes, I'm not going to tell you who the person's name was, uh, is, um, and nor, the, nor, the, nor the, the, the network they work for, uh, but they said, you know, I know sometimes in a service, but, but I, got it, I got it on tape. I know sometimes in a service, uh, yeah, you have to protect yourself. I know sometimes in a service, uh, you get happy, you say amen, and maybe when you think about things a little later, I know how the spirit can begin to move. Here's a journalist telling me how the spirit moved. Now, I've, I've been saved since 1977. I've been saved more years than that person been on this earth, but they're explaining to me how the spirit moved. Now, preaching is my wheelhouse. That's what I do. And I, if I don't know anything else, I know the Holy Spirit. And he says, you know, you can get, get excited and say some things. I said, are you asking me, do I still feel the same way I felt that night? Do I still agree with it? Uh, it's a little too cool. Some of the mothers are wrapping up. Y'all be sensitive to our senior saints. Amen. Do I still feel the way that I felt then? I said, yes, 100%. 100%. Um. She wanted to know if I would want to walk back or something. Well, the way I responded, you can't walk it back. Now, you can claim that you changed your mind. You certainly can't claim, I certainly wouldn't be able to claim and keep a straight face that I misunderstood him. So I'll show just a portion of the clip, but then we're going to move forward. And uh, God gave me the message before any of this happened. Here's something else I'm not supposed to say. Ain't but two genders. Two genders. Ain't nothing but men and women. And I can already see WRL out there. They got their licking their pencils right now. Trying to write fierce as they can. Get every word of this here. Get every word of this. You can go to the doctor and get cut up. You can go down to the dress shop and get made up. You can go down there and get drugged up. But at the end of the day, you were just a drugged up, dressed up, made up, cut up, man or woman. You ain't changed what God put in you, that DNA. The question was, do I still... Believe that. And what she said to me was, you know, Reverend, his being here and saying that at your church and the way the preachers were responding, she said, that's not a good look for your church. I said, uh, apparently, uh, you hadn't followed this ministry. I said, because I've been preaching this for decades. I didn't begin to, Mark Roberts, the lieutenant governor have not affected my preaching at all. I'm not, I'm no bandwagon preacher. I didn't just come at, at, at this. I just read to you what God said that. God, God said the same thing. So I said to her, no, we believe. So what, what has been aired, uh, uh, they're, they're, they're treating, you, if you've seen it already or you will, like, like they discovered something. Well, what you just saw, those were from our cameras. Them, this is our work. It's good work, isn't it? Our, our work, our producing. And we, we, we put it out there because um, we agree with that. And so now here we are in a day where this has become somewhat of an issue. Would you turn to Genesis chapter number two? I want to show you something. And uh, th this, this particular style of preaching is not for those who come today to be entertained. But it is for those who want to learn. Yeah. And regardless of where you may be on a issue, uh, I do not approach this issue from the point of view of a Republican or a Democrat, a liberal, nor a conservative. I am 
not a Democrat. I am not a Republican. I am a registered independent. I come at life issues from one point of view and one point of view only, the word of God. Not even mine, because I didn't write the book of Genesis. Moses is credited with writing the book of Genesis. It is the word of God. And I want to show you today some, some things in the word of God, if you're interested, so that you can find yourself if you want to go to heaven right. on the God side of things. Right. Amen. Now, if you don't want to go, that's on you. And, uh, uh, but if you miss heaven, you missed it forever, you'll miss it forever. And these are indeed heaven and hell issues. Genesis chapter number two, beginning with the fourth verse, it says, these are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, every plant of the field before it had been planted and every herb of the field before it grew. The herbs that had been planted hadn't grown yet and many of the plants that were to be planted had not been planted for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. That's one reason why uh, nothing was growing. So you can see the earth in this as, as a barren land. And there's another reason. And there was not a man to till the ground. See, when you read the first few accounts from Genesis chapter number one to Genesis chapter number five, what you read is zoom in. You read general accounts and then focused accounts. General accounts, focused accounts. So we just read a general account in, in chapter number one where it says, and, and God said, uh, and God uh, uh, created uh, man in his own image and all that, right? Uh, in, in chapter number one, verse 27, tw and we, we, we read here in verse 26 where God says, and God says, and let us make man in our own image. Now in chapter two, he's not making man over. He's zeroing in on what he just said in chapter one. So there are multiple accounts in Genesis of the same thing because it's multi-layered to see what God brought to pass. So he says here, uh, so there was no man. So, so apparently then uh, chapter number two, and verse 5 covers a time that was prior to chapter number 1, verse 26. Because in verse 26, God says, and let us make man. Well, here, there's no man. So he hadn't made man yet. It says, but there, and, and it hadn't rained. It says, uh, but notice this. Verse 6 says, but there went up a mist, a stream from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. Now the earth, the, the, you, you see why he says, the earth is, th this, the earth is parched. The herbs hadn't grown and many of the things had not been planted in the field. A mist went up and watered the earth and then the Bible says this in verse seven, and the Lord God formed Man, out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. This is the first man. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. Okay, the rest of the world is brown, it's parched, it's dry, but God starts a garden eastward in Eden. 
So God himself, it had to be a pretty garden. You're talking about a horticulturalist. God himself planted the Garden of Eden. And notice what he did. And then after he planted the Garden of Eden, Eden, the Bible says, and there put he, there he put, notice the, the uh, definite article, the. He put the man. He didn't put men. He put the man in that garden. Well, this is where he placed Adam, whom he had formed. Are you following me? And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight, good for food. And then he mentions the tree of life also was in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Are you following me? I want you to follow me closely now. Verse 15 says, and the Lord God took, here it is again, definite article, the man and put him into the garden of Eden. And look at, look at this, God gave him a job to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. All right? Are you following me? And notice this, and the Lord God said, it is not good that the man, definite article the, so he's not talking here about mankind. He's talking here about one man. It is not good that the man it should be alone. Someone says, you know, Adam was lonely. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible never speaks to what Adam's frame of mind was. The Bible speaks to God's frame of mind. God said, it is not good that the man, brothers, should be alone. You know why? Because man alone cannot fulfill Genesis 1 and 28. Genesis 1 and 28 says, and God blessed them, mankind, and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Replenish. So there's ample archaeological evidence that shows that Adam was not the first man on the planet. See, there, there are, they're not lying when they talk about Cro-Magnum man and all that. There's evidence. But humans, uh, Adam was none of them. God made man in his own image. But there were people who lived on the earth uh, before Adam. And that's not a revelation to you because you already understand that you cannot replenish something that was never plenished in the first place. And God didn't say plenish the earth. He said replenish. So God, the creator, wanted the earth filled with people. So therefore, he knew that Adam, the man, even though the man could keep the garden pretty good on his own. What the man couldn't do is asexually reproduce. He needed, uh, brethren, help. And the Lord God said it is not good, it is not fruitful, it is not pleasant that the man should be, should be alone, that he should exist by himself. And look at what God says. He says, I will make, I will make him a help 
meat for him. I will make someone who will compliment him. I will make someone who will be a suitable helper for him. I'll make someone and I'll construct them in such a manner where everything will fit. Ain't nothing got to be jerry-rigged. You ain't got to go under a knife. You have to cut off this. You ain't got to cut off one thing and try to cut a groove in somewhere else. You ain't got to try to put a uh, square peg in a round hole. No, I will make for him a suitable helper for him. I'm reading the Bible. Can you all bear with the Bible? Amen. Amen. Facebook Live, YouTube Live, can you all hang with me as I read the Bible? The Bible is not as entertaining as some other ways of communicating, but it is right. So God says, I will make for him a help me. For him. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them to Adam. They brought them to the man. Adam means the man. See, Adam is both a proper noun. It describes the one man, Adam. And Adam is also used to describe the human race. All right, so he says here, and, uh, and he brought them to Adam, this one man, to see what uh, he would call them. You know, God didn't call the elephant an elephant, Adam did. And, 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 and whatsoever God, whatsoever Adam called every living thing, uh, that was the name thereof. You know, Adam was a genius. He was the only man who never mumbled before he talked. He never crawled before he walked. Born with a full vocabulary, yes, born with, with, with the sense of a, of a supercomputer, upright from day one, day one, complete from day one. Yeah. We've never seen anything like Adam. Right. So intelligent, so wise, that he could, he, he, could, he, could, uh, he was a, a, a perfect horticulturalist without being taught horticulture. Knew how to make things grow, never went to college for it. Knew how to name all the animals, did, did it all. And uh, him and God talked every day. And so he was quite a man. And everything that Adam called it, it was. And, and Adam gave names to all the cattle, all the fowl, and every beast. Verse, I mean, verse 20. But for Adam, that was not found a helpmeet for him. And the Lord God, you're talking about an anesthesiologist. You're talking about an, an, an anesthetist. God knows how to put you to sleep. The Bible says, and the Lord God calls the deep sleep to fall upon Adam. See, see, God says, I'm getting ready to do something. You need, you need to sleep so deep that you won't feel it. So uh, here's what he did. He said, Adam? Adam said, yes. He said, go to sleep and sleep deep. You couldn't have woke him up had you threw water on him. Had, had the house been on fire, he just would have gotten burned up. He wouldn't have even known it. Because, see, God's getting ready to do something. So you know what God does? Brothers, you know, you check the ribs now. You know, we, we still got one missing. Am I right? We're following the signs. God took the rib out the man, gave one to, to the woman. See, so while he's asleep, God, according to the word of the Lord, and the Lord calls the deep sleep, a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And, uh, and now God ain't going to make a deep sleep fall upon anyone in here today now. But y'all fall out on me. God calls a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead of. And, and, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man, he made the prettiest thing I ever seen. Can I get an amen 
from the men. Praise the Lord. So he goes, brother, if you don't agree with me, something wrong with you. Bible says, and uh, from the rib, he made a woman and brought her to the man. And Adam said, now, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Adam said, her skin is like mine. She don't have fur. She don't have scales. She don't have pin- needles like the porcupine. Uh, she's not four-footed. She doesn't have a tail. She don't have split hooves. She has no mane and a long neck. She's not shaped like a horse nor a giraffe. She's shaped like me, but different. So where she's different at? Everywhere it counts. Everywhere it counts. Everywhere. Praise the Lord. There are similarities between male and female. But, 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 but Joshua, we different. Everywhere it counts. Amen. So, and so he was, he, was, he was blessed. And then Moses, are y'all following now? I'm making a defense for God's truth. Then Moses, who is the writer of the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Old Testament, who, who wrote uh, the uh, book of Genesis, said, well, how did he write the end of Deuteronomy if he died in, De- in Deuteronomy? Joshua finished it. He wrote these books, and Moses, Moses uh, from what God did. See, God gave Eve away. See, when he made her, that's why in the wedding, the father gives the daughter away. When he made her, the Bible says that God brought her to Adam. So the Lord, who gave it this woman to be married? The Lord said, I do. Because there ain't no her mother and I. I do. <laughs> and so now she's given away. And then Moses, on the basis of what God did, he established marriage God's way. For he says, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his, notice the word, wording. It does not say, and shall cleave unto his woman. It doesn't say, shall cleave unto a female. It doesn't say, shall cleave unto a girlfriend. No. He uses a term that denotes marriage shall cleave unto his wife. Is anybody seeing the pattern? The wife, however, had to be a woman to qualify, but a woman from God's factory. Now, it couldn't be a woman from no plastic surgery. It couldn't be a woman who uh, six months ago uh, was a man. To qualify, it had to be a woman that God produced to become a wife. You're all not saying amen. And then he adds something to it. It says, and they too shall be one flesh and it speaks to the purity of their relationship, and they were both naked. That was all right, wasn't it? Uh, The man, notice this, and his, notice the way it's constructed. This is for Bible students. Wife. Not the man and his girlfriend, but and his wife. I thought the women would say amen then, but but y'all not saying amen. You act like God just put a deep sleep on you. <laughs> it says, and 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 it says, and they were naked, both the man and his wife, speaking to purity, and they were not ashamed. If you're following me, you're beginning to see a pattern. Chapter three, 
verse 6 says, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was, a, it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat and gave, uh, gave also unto her man. Exactly. Thank you. Exactly. She, she, she's awake. Notice what he's establishing. Look at the Bible. Now we've heard male and female. Wife, husband. All that. I know what's in the news, but I want to show you what's in the scriptures. See, because you know what the news, you know what the news would call this type of preaching? Uh, transphobia. Hate speech. Homophobia. So, and, and what's homophobic about what I'm doing? Nothing. I'm reading the Bible. So what you begin to see is these people are calling Christianity. Homophobic. Transphobic. Amen. And hate speech. See, uh, Patrick Wooden didn't write the Bible. There's no book of wooden in the Bible. But the Bible is the word of God. So now look at this. Are you still with me? Amen. You know, one, one thing I love about preaching things like this, what it does is it brings to surface what people really believe. Because um, uh, some just aren't good enough to show on their faces that they're having trouble with this. And others, the Holy Spirit is revealing your spirit. I'm right. Ain't no two ways about this. I'm right. If, if I'm wrong, then the Bible is wrong. And I'm only right because I'm agreeing with the Bible. I'm not right because I'm right. I'm right because I'm agreeing with God. Amen. Now let's look at this. Uh, verse 8 says and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his what? Wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord and I notice this a low place and uh, verse 10 says, and, and, and God called Adam, and he said, and Adam answered him and said, I heard, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, God said to him, who told thee that thou wast afraid? And hast thou eaten of the tree? Wherefore I commanded thee that thou should not eat? And notice how it's constructed here. A low place. And the man said. Adam, Adam must have been woke. Because you know woke theology makes you blame everybody else. The woke crowd teaches black folk that we're victims. And if you're struggling, you are, you're struggling like you're struggling because of white people. White people are holding you down. So it's, it's easy to blame someone else. It's easy to blame society. I never met society, but it's even e easy to blame him. It's easy to blame uh, everyone else, the culture, and you know, some of you, your dad is dead and buried, and you're still mad with him, still blaming him. Oh no, and notice what Adam does. He blames, this man blames his wife, and by extension, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, he blames God. And that's the problem, one of the problems with critical race theory. If people are evil by virtue of color, then that means the creator is evil because he made them that color. We are just as wrong as the Nazis were when they thought that white people were superior based on whiteness. And that God had made them superior to us. And Hitler, you know, he was, so, he, was, he was sold on that. 
Jesse Owens went out there and outran all of them. And the, 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 the Fuhrer couldn't take it. It was wrong then and it's wrong now. Look at what the man said. And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. In other words, God, had you not given me her, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have eaten it. That ain't what you said the first day you saw her. First day you saw her, you said, now this. Now this. <laughs> that is. <laughs> oh my God, my God, my God, my God. Yeah, and now. <laughs> now, see, he's blaming God. See, for, for giving him the wife. He, you took her. And so. And then, and, then, and then the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. Follow the pattern. Verse 16, and unto the woman he said, I will multiply thy sorrow in thy conception. And in sorrow shall thou bring forth children, labor pains. And thy, thy desire shall be to thy husband. Notice that. Your desire is going to be over who? Your husband. This is where God put the battle of the sexes in marriage because he's telling the woman, he wasn't saying your desire shall be to your husband like you just sitting there, you just craving him because you just want him so bad and you just want to put your arms around him and have sex with him all night. No, he's saying you're going to want to dominate him. Tell him what to do all the time. Run the show. Oh, that Bible is something in it. And, uh, and then he said, but he shall rule over thee. So, so when you try to take over, he's going to say, not so fast. Let's go do this. He said, well, let's think about it. She says, go. He says, go right. She says, go left. Y'all know that's the way it is at times. And you, and you got to work to find harmony because there's a little Eve in every woman. And there's a little Adam in every man. And so you got to figure out how to level this thing out. Amen. It's good preaching here. Uh, hey, I'm preaching better than you are saying amen. Amen. Follow me. Follow me. Um, verse 17 says, And Adam... And unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy girlfriend, wife. Do you see it? Verse 20, and Adam called his wife's name Eve. You see that? Verse 21, unto Adam and also to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothed them. Now if God could take a mink or an animal and make a coat and clothe and you know ain't no need you asking me do you know how many animals they killed to make that coat? No. <laughs> Hadn't even thought about it. Let me put my coat on. <laughs> it didn't bother God it don't bother me. Now I think you ought to do things in a humane manner but oh no. And see when before we could get them it was all right to wear. And then all of a sudden, it was a problem when others were able to go buy a nice coat. When we were wearing pleather and, and, and everybody else was wearing leather, leather was all right. Then God moved you up to leather. Now we got a problem with leather. <laughs> See, some of you are too young to, to know when the change came in. I mean, that was a time where you could be wearing a lady could be wearing a mink and, and somebody would just run up to her and pour dye all over the coat to ruin it. Amen. I had purpose in the law. If that happened, I was going to shoot him. And I was going to do it in Jesus' name. When you get shot in Jesus' name, you know you shot. 
<laughs> say, say amen. Oh, let me move quickly. I'm, I'm almost where I'm headed, believe it or not. But I want you to, I want to show you something. I'm showing you biblical patterns. Chapter 4, verse 1 says, And Adam knew Eve, his wife, knew. I mean, the guy, he, he was introduced to her. He knew conjugal expression, yada. He enjoyed her sexually. But notice how it's constructed. You all not saying much. And Adam had sex with Eve. Who is she? Now notice he includes that. Now by now, by now, by now, by chapter four, everybody know that Eve is his wife. So why did he mention anyway his wife? What is he driving home? What is he saying? That's not a rhetorical question. What is he saying? He's saying that you're supposed to have sex with your wife. I've seen a time, if you say something like this in the holiness church, everybody would be screaming, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we're going, now we're acting like Presbyterians. So now you're acting like you're mad. I said, mm. <laughs> Why did he have to read that? Of course, it's in the Bible. Amen. It's in the Bible. And even though Cain slew his brother, even Cain had more sense than some have today. For verse 17, the A clause says, and Cain married his wife. Now Cain says, I got a whole lot of problems. But I tell you what's not one of them. I don't want to marry a man. Now I killed my brother. And uh, I'm a vagabond. I am a fugitive. I, I, I murdered my own brother. I cut his head off. But I'm not a homosexual. I got problems, but that ain't one of them. Notice what it says. And Cain knew his wife. And, and, uh, and uh, she had children for him. Are you following me? Are you following me? And then... Uh, the Bible says in verse 25 of chapter 4, and Adam knew his wife again. Adam said, let's do it again. And she bare a son and called his name Seth. Are you following me? Upper room, are you out there? Facebook Live, YouTube, y'all give me some love. Give me some likes. Let me know uh, that you're out there. Chapter 5, verse 1 through 2 says, and this is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day, we're going back to the creation, that God created man. In the likeness of God made he him. Here it is again. I guess I'm making a transphobic statement. I'm making a homophobic statement. I'm making a hatred statement. I'm making a statement of hate. As I read the Bible. See, as I read the Bible. You know where we're headed? We're headed toward the Bible being outlawed as hate speech. Because one thing cannot coexist. The Bible and the LBGTQ plus movement. They cannot coexist. Either they, there is no, one is right and the other is wrong. And you gonna have to choose. Whose side you're going to be on because in this church we ain't going to let you be on both sides now I don't know about all of the church of God in Christ but I know about upper room and I know about the doctrine of the church you're going to choose you're going to choose now you may choose with your feet and with your purse and leave that's alright you'll stand before God but you're going to choose choose you this day whom you will serve. If the Lord be God, then serve him. If Baal is God, then serve him. Look at this. Look at this. The chapter 5, verse 2 says, Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name mankind or humankind. King James says, Adam. In the day when they were 
created. I'm almost done. Let's move to chapter 6. The Bible says in chapter 6, verse 1, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful, fair, and they took them wives, all which they chose, of all which they chose. Now, these sons of God, now they had big problems. These were fallen angels. They were fallen angels. Angels listening to the devil and got kicked out of heaven. But the fallen angel didn't want no man. The fallen angels notice the women. And it was an unsanctioned union, but the fallen angels took women and married them. The fallen angels have more sense than some of the people that we see in the know today. Fallen angels. I'm in the Bible. You know, if you can't say amen to the Bible, you ought not be allowed to preach the Bible. See, I, I, am I right about that? Look at this. Look at this. Chapter 6. We're driving it home. Uh, verse 18. Look at this. It says, now we're in the days of Noah. God says to Noah, but with thee I will establish my covenant. And thou shall come unto the ark. Look at this. Thou, his family in here, thy sons and thy wife and thy son's wife with thee. And now listen to this. We're going a little further. I'm going to really get transphobic and homophobic now. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shall thou bring into the ark to keep them alive. To keep them alive. To keep them alive. To keep them alive to keep them alive. I feel like a, a record where you got a scratch and you get caught. Bring them all in to keep them alive with thee. And what, what you got to do to keep them alive? They shall be male and female. To keep them alive. They shall be male and Female. Aren't you glad I looked up all this for you? Mm-hmm. Some of y'all. This is good preaching. Chapter uh, number seven, verse two, th two three, through three. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by seven. The male and his female. And of the bees that are not clean by two. The male and his female. Of fowls also of the air. By sevens. The male and the female. To keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. Humankind cannot exist without male and female. Any lifestyle that is contrary to male and female 
is anti-human. According to the Bible. Now the world will call this hate speech. He's being hateful. He's being mean. For preaching the Bible. The, the reporter said to me, there are some hurt people in the LGBTQ community because of what the lieutenant governor said. And when preachers and preachers in churches uh, respond to it like that, in church of all place, uh, my, my, listen, how many of you have been hurt in your life because somebody told you the truth? Let me see your hand. Because sometimes the truth hurts. See, I'm not concerned about your sensibilities. I'm trying to save your soul. I'm trying to point you to heaven. I'm trying to help you get right with God. I'll leave coddling your little feelings to your mama and daddy or to people who really don't know what time it is. I want to help you go to heaven. My feelings have been hurt before. Look at my mama sitting there, so pretty and so sweet. She has a sweet senior citizen now, but she sure have hurt my feelings. <laughs> now, yeah, no, I to stick my lips like my friend, hurt feeling mama. Pow! Slap me and stop crying. Now I got to pull them in. And all I can say about it today is thank you, mama. Thank you. It hurt then, but I'm the man now. It hurt then, but if you get delivered, if you get delivered, is it not a good thing? I don't know of anybody who got saved who didn't get offended first because that's what the gospel does. It offends you. When you come face to face with how lost we are, how wicked one is, how lost one is. Oh, it makes you angry. Then the Holy Spirit convicts you. So look at this. And I'm, I'm almost, are, y'all, are you still with me? Amen. Uh, chapter, uh, chapter seven and uh, verse seven says, and Noah went in and his sons and his wives and his son's wives with him into the ark because of the flood waters. Verse nine, and when, and, and, and th- there went in two and two unto Noah in the ark. Look at this, the male and the female. As the church of God in Christ commanded, as Bishop Wooden commanded, as uh some Christians commanded. No, as God had commanded. Now, I want to I I ask you something. Is God transphobic? Is God homophobic? Is God filled with hatred? God commanded it. Is God wrong? You who want to fit in, you who want to fit in and you want to be light, is God wrong? Do you want the favor and the fellowship of men over the favor and the fellowship of God? The apostle Peter said, am I to obey God? He says, I am to obey God rather than man. They said to him, don't you preach no more in the name of Jesus. Peter said, wait a minute. Uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm told, I, I must obey God. This is the Lord's command. Not mine. Not mine, but the Lord's. Look at this, verse 13. In the self-same day in Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth and the sons of Noah and Noah's wife and the wives of his sons with them in the ark. Verse 16. And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh as God had commanded. 
Do you see it? As God had commanded him and the Lord shut him in. God shut the doors. Last verse, Genesis chapter number nine and verse one. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. God did that. Now, allow me to say this to you as we connect the dots, if they hadn't been connected already. I want to say this to you. I, as an African American male, a 60-year-old man, a native southerner. I've been saved since 1977, trained in the church of God in Christ. Hallelujah. I believe the Bible. I believe that the Bible is the, and I want to put emphasis on this word here, only. What about the Quran? Didn't I just say only? Only. What about the Book of Mormon? Only. I believe that the Bible is the only written in Aaron, that means no errors, infallible, makes no mistake and is true in all that it teaches, holy, inspired, which means God breathed word of God. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. This is my belief in the word of God. Are you listening to me? You have to decide how you feel about the Bible. God himself is the source of the Bible. Second Timothy, Timothy 3 and 16 says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. That means through God's control. It was God breathed. The scripture is the word of God. From Moses to John, Moses wrote the book of Genesis, John wrote the book of Revelations. A prophet is always a man who delivers God's message to men. We know that the Bible came from God for one very simple reason. Jesus told us so. It is on his authority as God as the God of the universe, that we are sure that the Bible is the word of God. He confronted, he confirmed rather the Old Testament's authority in his teachings and he promised an authoritative New Testament through his disciples. The son of God himself assures us that the Bible is the word of God. Now having said this, I want you to know this. I also trust and believe the Bible when it comes to my origin. I believe with everything in me, Genesis 1 and 1, which says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's why, and every, I've, I've taken this scripture, I've turned it right side up, upside down, inside out, and I haven't found anything in this scripture that says something blew up. That confirms the Big Bang Theory. Some gases exploded. Where did the gas come from? What ignited the gases? And where did the ignition come from? Are you following me? Give me just a few more minutes. You need to hear this. 
because I'm arming you with ammunition, not just to fight your enemy. I might cool it off a little bit here. I'm arming you with ammunition to fight your, your own mind. Because I understand you're being bombarded with except this. You've been bombarded by, been bomb, bombarded by commercials, by movies, by friends, by family members, right. by your own emotions. Right. So, see, a lot of people are caving because their brother or their sister or their daddy or their best friend is a certain way. So you forsake the biblical standard for your friend. You let emotion drive you more than the scripture. And then you try to replace the scripture with man. By saying, I don't care what Bishop Wooden says. Well, you don't have to care what I say. But what about what God says? Because the last time I checked, I didn't write the Bible. I'm just called with preaching it. The reason I have to trust God with my origin, and this is how the public school system got corrupted. Yeah, it's corrupted. Most educational systems are corrupt. Here's how Satan slipped in. With the theory of evolution. Right. Now, when, when the theory of evolution was first introduced, it was introduced as just that. Right. But, it, but it migrated from that to, they call it theory, but they teach it. You know what they said? We're, we're taking evolution. They drop theory. We're taking evolution. And as they preach and teach evolution, it doesn't take but a minute for a person to think. You know, a thinking person will say, if you can't trust the Bible, with how we got here. If we can't trust the Bible, the Bible's account how and why here is here. And why there is a here versus nothing. If you can't trust that, then what else can we trust the Bible with? How can we trust him with anything else? If I can't trust him with my origin, I can't trust him at all. I trust him with my origin. I trust what he said about the human race. I trust the number of genders that he gave. And I don't trust any of these other new numbers that man is coming up with. Because God didn't give me but two. What I've tried to show you today is something that is impossible to miss. I've tried to show you today that there is an undeniable construct in the Bible. In the first nine verse chapters of the Bible, I, sh I showed you a glaring construct. And, uh, and, and the only way to not see it is if you just don't want to or if you never read the Bible. Right. What was the construct? The construct was of male and female, male and female, man and woman, woman and man, male and female. Look at what God, God is speaking to us. He's screaming to us, telling us what is right, telling us what it takes for us to, su to succeed as a nation. Right there, in the beginning of the book, in the beginning of the book, the book does more to establish male and female than it does to establish and to teach as a doctrine the origins of God. For God has no origin. See, the Bible just tells us something. And don't even try to convince. It just tells you. Don't even, it doesn't even go into anything. It just tells you. Slaps you in the face. First verse. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Who? God. Where is it from? I ain't gonna talk about that. How do we know he exists? We're not talking about that. How do we know he's real? We ain't going into that. I'm just telling you. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Now at that point, you gotta choose. Do you believe this? Or don't you? I believe it. With all my heart. Now that I believe him and his existence, 
I believe what he said. Male and female. This is a, a pattern, a paradigm. It can't be dismissed. It can't be thrown away. The foundation of human existence, thank you for taking time to hear me today, is that of male and female. Not male and male. Not female and female. But male and female. And if you read Isaiah chapter number 45, you will find out that a male cannot change himself from being male to female and a female can't change herself from being female to male for Isaiah 45 says, woe be unto him who strive with his maker. How dare you argue with your maker and tell your maker he got it wrong. God says you're in trouble. Concerning the male-female relationship, the Apostle Paul said this in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 8 through 9. He said, for the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither is the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman. Uh-huh. Neither the woman without the man in the Lord. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman. But everything, all things are of God. God made everything. But the only man who walked this planet who did not come through the womb of a woman was Adam. The rest of us, a woman gave birth to us. A real one. Because by the way, they're the only ones who can. And uh, you know, the transportation secretary, Pete Buttigieg, been on two months marriage leave, uh, uh, maternity leave. The man he's married to had a baby. Somebody had a baby. So I wonder who gave birth. It's messed up. The messed up world. Let me wrap this up. This is heavy, too heavy for some. But I'm right. I'm right. I want to tell you something. I'm going to tell you this because I love you. And I want you to hear me. The attack on male and female has the only gender, the only sex. The attack on the construct that God put in the earth is an attack on biblical Christianity. You better know it. The LGBTQ plus community is attacking the Bible because the, it, you find these teachings in the Bible. I saw one time Oprah and she was talking and she said one time, and she says, you know, we got to get rid of words like abomination. Where do you find that word? In the Bible. So you need to know how to hear what you hear. You need to know what it is you're listening to. These, these people are, are attacking our religion. And what's at stake is freedom to worship as we believe. How dare the news post anything that take place in our church. And, uh, and we're supposed to feel some kind of way. You can't, you can't shame Patrick Wooden. And you can't uh, frighten me with things like that. Because I, I don't care what you think. Uh, the Bible is right. The word is right. I want, I want to show you this and then I'm going to pray and send you home. Um, I'm telling you these things because I love you and you need to know. Uh, show them slide A. I know you're getting tired. Slide A. Now, on slide A, you see those three young people. <sighs> slide A. Now, the first young person says, hello. 
His name is, his pronoun is he, him. The middle person, the pronoun is she, they. And our, uh, the third one is they, them. They, them, she, they, he, him. And they call us crazy. And they're telling us that we need to learn all of this. And in some, and in some corporate settings, it costs you your job if you get it wrong. And you know, it kind of reminds me of what that man said to Jesus when Jesus says, what is your name? The man said, my name is Legion, for we are many full of demons. What else, what else but a demon could come up with, uh, I want you to call me he, him. She, they, and they, them. Now, as a Christian, you can't participate in that. Do you know why? I'm, I'm going to tell you why. I want to tell you why. And, and I'll come back uh, probably Thursday night uh, or the next time and go into, because I, I have here a list of all of the genders and the things that they say. Uh, one thing I got to deal with before we close is their statement about sex assigned at birth. Because you need to know this. Because this is one of the phrases that they're using to screw your mind. They're screwing with people's minds, okay? And, uh, and I'm, and I'm going to protect your mind. Thank you. I want to protect your mind. But let me tell you why you can't call nobody no she, they, he, him, and all that. This is according to their own people. Um, everyone, everyone I'm, I'm reading, this is from NPR. Um, a guide to gender identity terms. This is from GLAD. Uh, it says this. Every, everyone has pronouns that are used when referring to them. And getting those pronouns right is, is not exclusively a transgender issue. Pronouns are basically how we identify ourselves apart from our name. Here's how someone refers to you in conversation. All right? It's, excuse me, it's how someone refers to you in conversation. Says Mary, Emily, O'Hara, a communications officer at GLAD. She said this, quote, when you are speaking to people, it's a really simple way to affirm their identity. So, for example, using the correct pronouns for trans or non-binary youth, youth is a way to let them know that you see them, you affirm them, you accept them, and to let them know that they're loved during a time when they're really being targeted by so many discriminatory and anti-trans state laws. Now, I want to ask you a question. How many Christians are interested in affirming and helping someone believe that he is actually a he, him, or she, they, or they, them? Do you think that that's the role of a Christian? To affirm wickedness? To go along with it? Is that the new role of the Christian? I didn't know that God called us to be sponges. I didn't know that God called Christians to absorb the culture. I thought God called us to be rocks. Praise the Lord. Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I thought God called us uh, to be the salt of the earth. Sometimes the Christian has to be a little salty. Got to, got to shake some things up. 
I thought the Lord called us to be the light of the world. Light, shed truth. Show the way when people are in wickedness rather than affirming it. Now the Bible says this. Not only are people wrong who do things, but they who also take pleasure in them that do them. God pays attention to what we participate in. See, you may not agree with John when he's calling himself Joanna, but you call him Joanna. You're in trouble with God. You can't do it. You can't do it. I'm getting ready to pray. I told you we wouldn't shout today. But I want, I want you, I, this, this last one, you have to bear with me with this and I'm, I'm done. They said in their glossary of gender identity terms. And uh, Patricia, you know, uh, we can make these available to people who want them. But some, some things are too precious to keep to yourself. Uh, sometimes we have to do all the work for you. <laughs> Preach it, teach it, make the books. Uh, but in that glossary of gender identity terms, they say sex refers to a person's biological status, typically assigned at birth. They use the phrase assigned at birth, assigned at birth, assigned at birth. That's a lie. It's a lie from the pit of hell. From the pit of hell. Because our sexual identity is not assigned to us at birth. I want to know. Say, I've never had a baby. Men can't do that. But I would like for every mother or every woman in here who has given birth and you decided not to wait until you gave birth to find out the sexual identity of your child, would you please stand? You wanted to know before the child was born what its sexual identity was. Would you please stand? This is not a trick question. Some of y'all scared to get up. You think, you think I'm getting ready to get you? No. See, what you don't know, this is, why, this is why I've taken the time to do this today. You don't know that you contradict everything they're saying. Now, how long do you have to be pregnant before you know what it is you're carrying? The gender. Huh? 16 to 18 weeks. Somebody said, 12 months. Now, the blood work makes it sooner. Am I right? The, the ultrasound is how many? 16 to 18 weeks. The blood work is sooner. So then that means before the child is born, God has already assigned its sexual identity. The assignment comes from God, not the parent, not the doctor, not the politician, not the baby itself, not the mother, not the father, but God. These people are liars. They want to make you think that it's up to you. And the reason they want you to believe that they use the phrase assigned at birth is to imply that you could have gotten it wrong. So later on, people say, you know what? I don't agree with my sex that was assigned to me at birth. Well, what about the one that was assigned to you before you were born? What about that one? The one that was assigned to you when you were in your mother's womb, when David said, what David said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. 
I'm going to do something at this close that you'll probably never see me do again. But I'm going to do it today, but I can't do it long. I'm going to take the Bible out of it. Did you ever think you see Bishop Wooden taking the Bible out of a thing? Now, I'm scared, but I've just done it. I took the Bible. I put the Bible away. And I want to say to that man, that there was a transgender man, transgender woman, all of them. I have taken the Bible out for a moment. And I'm going to call on other disciplines. Brother, who have changed your body. Science says you're still a man. Biology says you're still a man. The DNA says you're still a man. The medical profession says you're still a man. You are lying to yourself and people are lying to you when they call you a woman because without the scripture, everything else about you, I don't care what you cut, nipped, nor tucked, you are still a man. Now I got to get the Bible back. I can't, I, can't, I can't go too long without it. I feel better now. I was getting scared. Woo! Something's happening. But, and if the communities were, at, were fair, you know what I'm They tell us, follow the science. Talk to doctors about what they see before AIDS, about the damage that homosexual sex does to the male anatomy. No, don't come see me. Go see the doctor. And find an atheist doctor. Find somebody who don't even believe anything and say, now, doc, I don't want your opinion. Just tell me what you see. I'll form my own opinion as to whether or not God got it right or it is, it is in a man's best interest to ignore God. And when the doctor finished talking to you and give you all the diseases and all the things that happened, I got a long list of them. You'll say, you know what? God was right. God was right. And God is right. And I think I'm going to follow God because the world is lying to us. This is an attack on biblical Christianity. And I want to say to every believer in here today, Genesis 1 and 27 is as true today as it was when God said it. When the Lord God approved his creation and said it was a masterpiece and said it was complete and said it was very good. What was very good was the human race being divided into two genders to live on this beautiful planet, to work the planet, to raise children, to live their lives and to worship God. And God called them male and female. Thank you, Jesus. I want to pray for you now. I want to pray that God strengthen your mind. I prayed last night. I said, Lord, they're putting us out there. They're pretending that they discovered something that they hadn't. We posted it. And Lord, I see these are the same people who will go get little children and bring them down to the governor's, lieutenant governor's mansion and the little kids screaming, we're not filthy, we're right. not filthy. When he never called children filthy. He didn't call transgenders demons. He said that their behavior is demonic. I, I, don't, I don't know of anything else that you would call it. You mean tell me you're going to pay to get your perfectly healthy Sex organs cut off? The average man I know would rather die. 
Just let that condition just take him on to heaven. Say, so I'm sick. But I'm going I'm to leave here, man. Show's over. Y'all don't like me, do you? And yet we're seeing more and more people and they're encouraged to do it. Now watch me make everybody mad now. That is the lasting Obama legacy. Yes, sir. Yeah, I said it. Yeah, I said it. Sue, he sued our state, his administration. Sued our state so men could go to the bathroom with women. And look at the sham that they're doing right now. You know that white man they showed that they, had to, they got in the fight at the school board meeting, which made President Biden now turn the FBI on parents? Do you want to know why that man went off? I, I think what he did was light. A transgender went into the bathroom with his daughter in that school and sodomized his daughter, raped her uh, uh, brutally. Because I think he behaved like I would went up there and shot up the school board. Let me hush. No, don't, no, don't, I don't want nobody to do that and say I said do it. But I, I think he behaved with incredible. Restraint, because I'm I'm a father. Now, if you if you're not a father, you don't have a daughter. You have, you don't don't judge me. You don't, you don't know. You you so you sit over there. But these dads in here, and can you imagine somebody gonna go in the bathroom, your daughter in there, and going to so brutally sodomize her? And when the school found out about it, you know what they did? They quietly. Translated, uh, transferred the boy to another school. Guess what the transgender did at the, 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 the new school? The same thing. Now, do you think that, that parents are supposed to just let that happen in the name of political correctness? That, that, that we're supposed to be satisfied with this? Mm, 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 mm. No, 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 no. The only way you can even have think that you have uh, hesitation with that, you can't be. You, you, you're not a parent, and you're not connected to God. You can't do that to people. Then and so now the parents who are upset about it, the parents are being treated like domestic terrorists, labeled by the White House. We need prayer. We need prayer. I want to pray for you. I want to pray that God keep your mind strong. The Lord showed me. He says, Patrick, look at the commercials. He said, Patrick, look at the commercials. Patrick, look at the movies. Patrick, look at the sitcoms. Patrick, look at the com comedians. Patrick, look at the politicians. Everything is, the people are being, being bombarded with the message that this is all right. And he says, Patrick, make no mistake about it. Many hearts and minds are turning. And he said, pray for their minds. Pray that I keep their minds. Pray that I keep them strong. Sometimes people, are you still at upper room? You still over there? Amen. And sometimes weak people, rather than having the power to stand their ground, it's much easier to go down to the first church or the fridge there where everybody is liked. So I like this preacher because he, he, doesn't, he doesn't bother anyone. All y'all going to hell. Bible says, woe be unto the prophet that all men speak well of. Somebody said, well, wouldn't you don't seem to be slowing down? I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm called to stand for God. Oh! I'm called! Glory. I want to pray for your mind. 
God keep you. Teach your children. Teach your children. Remind that boy that he's a boy. Remind that girl that she's a girl. That God made her like she is. And God made that young man. See a young man struggling, put your arms around him. Love on him. God will deliver. God will keep. But don't you cave and go along with the devil's mess. Father, I have delivered your word. I have delivered this message. I have tried to expose at least one of Satan's lies. This lying phrase, assignment, gender, assigned at birth. Something that defies even common sense. Mothers hadn't even thought about it. They knew their child's uh, uh, sex and gender identity before they gave birth. The whole room was full of blue or pink. Father, right now, strengthen the mind. Strengthen the minds. And give, anoint us with preachers and teach Strong ones. Strong ones who will stand their ground on matters of importance such as these. Father, I know that there is coming a separation from the wheat and the, and the, and the chaff and the wheat and the tares. And Father, I pray that we come down on your side in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for every elder. Strengthen these men. For every missionary. Because the Lord showed me, it's really, the devil really targeting black women. See, y'all done cozy it up so much with these feminine guys or these sisters till you don't, you, you almost, you almost no, you can't fight no more. You ain't got it. You, are, you almost messed up. See, because Satan set you up a long time ago. Get you to like the sisters, all y'all at the mall together. And you lost your ability to discern. Now you don't have a strong message. You, you don't know what to do. You better grab hold to God's word. Father, strengthen the mind. Father, strengthen the heart. Father, strengthen our men. Father, strengthen our women. God put it in us deep where we will believe the Bible. Your construct is true. Your pattern is complete. We see it. And not only is it complete, but it's very good. And we see it. And we declare today. God got it right when he made us male and female in Jesus' name. Clap your hands for Jesus and give God the praise today. Hallelujah. I speak a word of healing to everybody who is sick. Those who are streaming, those who are here in the sanctuary, may God do what you would have him to do. God bless your finance. God bless your home. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let's make ready our offerings and we're going home. We're going home. We're going home. Preacher, you, you dare raise an offering after preaching a word like this or we're going to raise a big one. Because the truth, the truth is, the truth is, is welcome in my heart. Glory to God.